Good day everyone, Adrian Lim here of Novo 7 Tech. For this video, I would like to show to you guys the features of the FlyMe 4.0. For what I have here right now is the Meizu M1 Note. Of course, it features the latest FlyMe 4.2.0.3i. So, for those who doesn't know that what I have here is an international version and it is intended for users like me who doesn't text or read Chinese characters and this version is the one that is more suitable for overseas customers and actually this version is also the one that doesn't have those bloatwares installed and all of those free music streaming and of course you have to let go of the free 40 terabyte cloud storage in your FlyMe account but before we mock or mock about those other features that was gone and missing from the international version, I would like to show to you the different features of the FlyMe 4.0. Of course, one very obvious uh, feature we have here is that the absence of the app drawer as compared to other Android phones out there. And it's very easy to customize and edit your apps and folders by sorting them out like this. So, for example, I would like to uh, move my music and video and rename this to multimedia. I may do so. So, I'm running my fingers up multimedia. And as you can see, I'm using the latest Flexi keyboard. So, I had no problem using the keyboard just like that. And in case you change your mind, you can just drag and put it back out there. Now, adding widgets. For example, would like to get rid of this calendar widget. All I need to do is long press on the screen, add a widget, and long press on the desired widget, just like that. And there we go. I can even resize the widget as long as you can see the four dots on each side. You can either extend. So for example, there we go. I can extend and even widen as I choose. And that's how easy it is to navigate using the FlyMe 4.0. Of course, the volume buttons that we don't see in the side toggles is now controlled by the volume rocker here. And I would like to show you something. For example, this camera app, which I use so often. Uh, for example, in the stock mode, you can uh, drag it from outside and back in. So... I can do this or even put folders within another option so for example like this there you go and if you're not happy with that you can do this so going back to the volume so I have here my camera on so I would like to take pictures why not take a selfie of myself and upon taking a selfie picture of course, only, normally when people take selfies, they press the button here and they either uh, somebody passes by and tips your phone off and it falls to the ground and so that's a pretty sad story. So what I do here, if, if I'm a righty, I can touch on this volume and take a snapshot there and if I'm a lefty, of course, I still have my thumb pressing through the volume rocker. So that's one unique feature for the camera that we can really maximize uh, in using groupies or shots because be it that I'm a right-handed or be it that I'm left-handed, we have firm hand grip on the phone all of the time. And I would like to show you guys one very important feature for the fly me so for example I have this uh, picture of mine so I'll click on the face beautification so it automatically detects my facial lines my eyes and my lips and let's do next so let's zoom in and I can instantly adjust my skin tone it's like built-in camera 360 on the fly so going back to original I would like to edit and turn my complexion lighter give myself a blush on make my face slimmer oh yeah and make my eyes bigger and way bigger and of course would like to put some eyelashes 
so there you go so that will make me look like a fag and if I want to smoothen my skin and put some uh, I don't know purple lipstick and put some eyeliner so this is how I look probably if I'm part of the drag show uh, contest in Las Vegas or something <laughs> sorry guys to know how to do makeup but this is how to do it so don't I look nice there you go so that's instant face beautification enhancement which is built-in app in the fly me 4.0 so another feature that I'd like to show to you guys is the smart option wherein we can oops we undo that we can select the color of an ink and of course the brush tool we can make it thicker or lighter or thinner and for example I'll use this capacitive pen which we can buy in any popular digital store so for example I'd like to there no I'm not happy with that so I'll just increase the size there you go so So now I'm having fun editing my own picture. So let me let's give myself a goatee, a nice fierce eyebrow, and some whiskers, just like that. And we're done. So it automatically saves the original picture and applies the new settings. Of the new picture so take for example what do I the, what do I need this new feature for so I'll take this uh, picture of this phone this MX4 Pro okay there we go so let's measure it now so assuming that this is something that I really need to do on a daily basis I'm an architect or an engineer or or interior designer so this is six inches by three inches okay so, so now the picture that I just took I can put footnotes so let's put the mark feature on and then let's paint it in red now let's use the shape tool to assign a long arrow okay there we go and another arrow of course for the length and the width okay now like I said it's six inches so six inches so when I'm done all I need to do is tap on that and I can resize or even shift it okay and another description here so three inches there we go and for example I would like to sign this or approve this document for example I'm signing a contract or an autograph and of course the background is kind of dark so I can use two of my fingers to zoom in and change this to maybe uh, yellow and change my brush stroke to a smaller type pen and now I can sign on this and there we go so put the date and save and there we go it's a final proofing and for example another feature that I would like to edit for example I would I don't like to show my face okay let's apply the mosaic let's zoom in a bit so let's choose a mosaic and there you go so now my face can't be recognized it's that easy it even has its own uh, dropper where you can uh, choose the type of color within the picture and you can edit and retool the whole thing so that's just a really nice feature for built in the fly me and of course 
within this you can have the clear haze and other options available built in and you can also toggle between the brightness contrast temperature saturation and halation so you have this different effects like this you can blur the picture to what extent and it's just plain fun now going back to the project i had earlier so now it can share this to either bluetooth or facebook or email but i can opt to put it in my memo pad now this feature enables me for example i would like my title to be mx uh, for pro dimensions okay and okay oh no, the mx4 and there we go now in my memo pad which i can access here now i have this new project along with other memos i already created before to help remind me of what i want to do so each task is now easier when you have pictures to be associated with it isn't that just something nice now again these features are available for the fly me and uh, you can have tons of fun with the picture app but one thing i would like to show you is how to multitask is by simply swiping up to the lower right or swiping left from the lower left and you can see all of the active apps there and once you see this lock icon you can long press to unlock it and lock and long press again to lock it so what this does is simply i'll show you in a while for example i'd like to lock my memo to kill an app i just swipe up and there i just did it again but if you have too many apps running in the background all you need to do is swipe down and it will kill everything except the active memo or the one that is locked so to tap on that it will bring you back just that quick and easy to that running app so that's multitasking real time and once more to prove that how nice and easy multitasking is i would like to open four more apps here and i would like to introduce you guys to the smart touch okay smart touch is the virtual button that you see here right now and it kind of duplicates this unique halo button so before going further to the smart button let me show you some tricks on how to use the uni button here or the halo button as we call it for example i would like to go to documents i tap this once i go back i go into a folder and to another folder and to another folder and to another folder and when I tap it once again, it just goes back. But for some reason, I just like to go up one notch or go up a folder. I don't see the back button anywhere. I just swipe up and it goes back up one folder at a time. So this button now acts as your home button and your back button at the same time. You don't have the normal back button you see here in typical Android phones and the menu button here. In typical Android phones fly me is just straightforward and very easy and clean and if you're asking me what the power button is doing on the upper right corner it's no design flaw all the engineers and mains have really thought about that very well because they wouldn't make software without thinking of the hardware and it's a good uh, well marriage of two of the best things made to did so far which is the perfect hardware and software and to prove it i'll just long press the screen and it's turned to sleep mode now i would like to turn it on i just tap twice to check on the app to the notifications or the time or the date and to unlock the whole screen immediately i just swipe up so now that eliminates the need to keep on pressing the hardware physical button found on the upper right corner and like I said, the Smart Touch also replicates the same thing as the Uni button. So for example, I would like to go to Memo, I tap once, I go back. I would like to go to Documents, I tap once, I go back also. But once I sweep up, it kills the task or goes back home, depending on the configuration that you assigned it. Where you can do so, 
by checking on the options. Apparently, the gesture mode for the Smart Touch is not available in the accessibility bar in MX4 and M1 Note, but it is available for the MX4 Pro, as you can see here. So, just to show you guys a quick comparison. So, gesture wake up and then Smart Touch right away. So, with this one, you can even toggle the opacity of the smart touch where you can make it darker or lighter depending on your specification now this also acts as a alt tab like tool for example i have settings documents memos and clock all you need to do is sweep to the left and we'll go to settings okay you'll go to your documents and then your memos and then your clock and you can go back and forth that easy so that's multitasking right at your fingerprints but one of the features i love best about this one is for example imagine yourself walking on the street and you cannot reach your document app and all you need to do is double tap and it goes down there so same thing i would like to play some music double tap and play my music and that does the job so now multitasking has never been easier because of the smart touch and of course the fly me OS. So let's turn this on, uh, turn this off, and I'll show you another thing. So let's play a video, for example. Okay, let's play a movie. Okay, let's play something colorful. Okay, now the default or native player of the Meizu has this built in toggle buttons to for the brightness, for the sound, okay, or even for fast forward and rewind and we can also long press the screen to lock it and that enables you to avoid accidental interruptions on the screen for example you're going to lend this phone to your kid or to a toddler and they can make uh, ensure long playability of your videos so let's play this in portrait mode so okay there we go You can access this carousel tab uh, thumbnail and also you can compress to a floating window now imagine yourself while watching a video you're browsing through uh, Amazon eBay or Lazada doing your online shopping and at the same time you would like to also uh, do calculator and con uh, convert the currency of course you may select what type of currency you choose it will update by itself depending on your internet connectivity and aside from that you can choose from different features like the length area weight volume and of course calculator so that is what we call dynamic multitasking so you're running apps three apps at the same time dynamically this can be youtube or this can be facebook or whatever app the thing is it's there and it's working and it's flawless so Again, FlyMe is so fun to use that I, I, I forget about time because also I would, I'm so uh, caught up with all the nice features I have yet to discover. And of course, the FlyMe account features um, for the international version, uh, the music streaming is missing. The free music streaming is missing. And of course, the 40 terabyte cloud storage is not there. But of course... Uh, we enjoy all of the English version and uh, some of the tips that uh, we don't see in other phones. And of course, for the SIM toolkit, all you need to do is go to call on the settings and then just scroll down. As long as you have your SIM card in there, go to SDK apps or SIM toolkit. And as you can see, I'm using my smart SIM and you can access your SIM toolkit menu there. Okay. And... Uh, for FlyMe once more, I would like to show you guys that this OS is really unique that it's even used for other brands like Samsung, S3, LG G2, Sony Xperia, and, uh, and other phones because a lot of the user experience and interface is so uh, well thought about and loved that they requested it to be made for other brands as well. And for now, that's a wrap. Uh, thanks for watching this uh, short tutorial about FlyMe.
till next time goodbye